in the matter of Walden versus Chrysler Group LLC and Brian Harrell. Today's date is December 19th, 2014. The time is 3.51 p.m. This is a videotaped deposition of Francis Kujawa being taken at the Courtyard Hotel, 400 Gulfstream Way, Dania Beach, Florida. The camera operator is Khaled Masrati. The court reporter is Jamie Onuki, both on behalf of Tiffany Alley reporting and video. Will counsel please state their appearances? Jeff Butler on behalf of Remington Walton's family. Terry Brantley on behalf of Chrysler Group, LLC. Will Chrysler agree and stipulate that when a document has Walden against Chrysler stamped at the top and the CG LLC bait stamp at the bottom, that document was sent from Chrysler to plaintiffs? I'd have to see the document, Jeff. You don't agree that where, when a document bears Chrysler's bait stamp, that means the document came from Chrysler? I'm not familiar with what document you're referring to, but if you'd like to show me in some documents, I'd be more than happy to There are many that. of them in the file, I think, that you probably have, including the Cooper City Police Report, uh, photographs in this case, and uh, the Milano complaint. You have them? Can I do. Show them to me? Let's see. Here are the documents. And are you representing for the record that these documents were sent to plaintiff's counsel by Chrysler Group LLC as opposed to you from another entity? Well, what I can tell you is that uh, it's my understanding that, and is this on video? I think we're on now. You want to be on video? Well, let's leave it on. I think we're about finished with this. Well, I mean, you understand that, and I object to any of this being played at trial in front of the jury, but um, the customer assistance inquiry record care, I mean, those are typically documents that we provide whether or not I can tell you if this is accurate, if something's been removed from this since we've produced it, I, I don't know. Um, I can't go through every line item as we sit here before this deposition and, and affirm uh, the information contained on that document. That is the type of document we typically provide. Um, with respect to what appears to be plaintiff's third amendment complaint, again, um, it does bear bait stamp numbers, which would seem to suggest it was produced. Do I know that this was produced by Chrysler in the form that's being provided here today and used? I'm not asking you to verify that. The question is just whether Chrysler agrees that when a document is stamped walled against Chrysler no, and I, bears not the going CG LLC bait stamp, okay. it was produced to plaintiffs from Chrysler. I, I'm telling you that, uh, no, I can't stipulate that without actually looking at the document, making sure the document 
is complete in its entirety, making sure it hasn't been altered in some way. You're looking at the altering documents. documents. No, I'm not accusing you of altering a document. But I'm telling you I'm not going to make a blanket stipulation as to every document that might bear bait stamp later in this case. I'm not asking about every document. I'm asking about those four. Or I'm, of you now. I, I'm telling you that I don't, I, again, I don't know this police department document. I don't have the time to go through every page, every line to make sure it's something, um, it is accurate in terms of what exactly was produced by Chrysler. It certainly has Walden versus Chrysler Group in a CG LLC bait stamp. And that doesn't indicate it was it. produced by Chrysler. It indicates that it is a document that appears to be produced by Chrysler and produced in this case. It either was or it wasn't. Yeah. All right, we'll go with what the appears with issue. Can we stipulate and agree? I'm not stipulating anything, Jeff. Well, let me ask you the question. You can refuse again if you want. I'm going to use the language that you just used with me. Can we stipulate and agree that where a document, and I'm talking only about the ones that you just reviewed, is stamped Walden against Chrysler at the top and CG LLC followed by a Bates number at the bottom right, it appears to be produced by Chrysler. I will say that that is a consistent manner with how we have produced documents in this case. Well, let's go. Uh, will the court reporter please swear in the witness? Okay, here I am, Mr. Yes, ma'am. This will be the deposition of Mr. Frank Kajawa, taken pursuant to notice in the case of Walden against Chrysler. It's taken pursuant to the Georgia Civil Practice Act for all purposes permitted by uh, the act, including use of trial. Uh, would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury your name, please? Uh, Francis Kajawa, but I go by Frank. Where do you live, Mr. Kajawa? I presently live in Hollywood, Florida, at 3193 Arthur Terrace. We're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida today, is that right? Correct. Are we close to your home? Yes, sir. Did you at one time witness a wreck involving a Jeep Grand Cherokee being rear-ended? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us how you came to see that, where you were coming from, where you were going, that kind of thing. Uh, it was in the morning time, and I had just dropped my daughter off uh, at ballet. I was off that day from work, and I was returning home uh, from work. Tell us what you saw with respect to the Jeep being hit in the rear. Um, when I was heading westbound, shortly, short from home, a couple miles from home, uh, approaching the light of Hiatus Road, um, I was set to be the first car at that light in the right-hand lane. And it was, the Jeep was parked in the left lane. And um, as I'm approaching, the light was red. Uh, from, from the side, um, I see uh, a car, and only for, for a split second, and I hear, Urk! to where the skid mark was just instantaneous. Enough to hear it, but it wasn't a long skid mark, and then a crash. And I looked, and the Jeep that was struck from behind uh, makes a sweeping turn and ends up in my lane, so to speak, uh, almost facing me with the driver's door kind of in front of me, facing almost the opposite way. Before you go any further, if you don't mind, let me hand you a couple model vehicles that I've brought with me. Um, and I'll put them in front of you, so that's right with you. I'll move your water bottle, and maybe you can move that pad and pen. And on behalf of Chrysler, we object to the use of the vehicles to the extent they're not the same vehicles that were involved in the accident. I'm going to hand you a black Jeep Grand Cherokee, and although that's not the exact type of vehicle or the exact color vehicle that you saw, I'd like you to use that to represent the Jeep Grand Cherokee that was involved in the wreck that you saw. And I will hand you a blue pickup truck. And although this isn't the same as the striking vehicle of what you saw, I'd like to use this blue pickup to represent the vehicle that rear into the Jeep Grand Cherokee that you saw. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, well, by, would you use those vehicles and demonstrate for us the angle of the collision of the striking vehicle into the rear of the Jeep Grand Cherokee that you saw? Yeah, if I could um, use my glasses as my car. Um, th this is my car in the intersection, and we're facing this way. Um, the Jeep was struck in the rear from behind, and after it was struck, it ended up going like this. And it ended like that, right in front of my truck. Right in front. I'm the first one at the red light, and that's he was the first one at the red light. 
and it swooped around and, and came in front. Do you want me to continue? Let me ask you this before you, you go on. Did the vehicle that hit the Jeep, did that vehicle hit its brakes before the collision? I heard a, <laughs> so I can only assume that it did moment briefly. Did the sound? It wasn't a long, it was a high-pitched, <laughs> Did the sound that you heard sound like uh, like it sounds when somebody locks up the brakes? Yes. Okay. Tell us what you did um, after the collision, and if you if you want to demonstrate, you might need to move that jeep back toward the center of the table so the videographer can get it. Um, I got out of my car, uh, truck. I was in my truck, and I came racing to to the window on sort of like this little angle. And uh, as I was coming to the window, the, this back part was filling with smoke, and it was working its way from the back uh, luggage compartment, for lack of better words, towards the front. Let me, would you mind turning that Jeep so the side will be toward the camera and then demonstrating again where the smoke was coming from? The smoke started in the back here, and it was like it was being pumped. You could see it flowing towards the front as I'm coming up to the car. Um, I made contact with the driver of the car. What kind of contact? And um, eye contact with the driver of the car. He, he looked up at me, looked very scared, of course. Um, eyes open. He was reaching down towards the area. I couldn't tell if it was the seatbelt or the door. He was reaching down towards that area. He looked up at me, and then he was reaching down at that area. And like I say, I don't know what he was trying to do, so I tried to open the door. And when I pull on the door, it didn't open. So then I put my bare foot on the door right here, and I pulled hard, and the door opened just a little crack, maybe an inch, a little crack, just enough to let out. And I don't know how to explain how this happened, but if, if you've ever been cooking in, um, in your oven at home even, and you've opened the oven too soon to look in at what's cooking, and you feel that breath of hot air come out at you, when I cracked that door, that, that breath of hot air came so hard that it pushed me off my feet. And I did a back somersault and um, came to my feet. And then before I could run back to the car, my next thought was break the window. But before I can get back to the car, it was in, in flames. There was no seeing the driver at that point. And um, I just heard a, a loud scream. It was like, ah, and it, and it faded. And I started to cry. Couldn't do nothing. That was his only hope, and couldn't do it. Were you a paramedic at the time of this collision that you saw? Yes, I was. Did the fire that you observed start in the rear of the Grand Cherokee? I would assume so. That's where the black smoke was, and like I said, I could see the driver at that time, and the black smoke was coming from that, that section towards the front. How fast did the fire spread once it got going? I'm sure it must have just been seconds. I'm sure it must have been seconds. It seems like forever. And you're, you're scared. How much of the Jeep burned? Just some of it or all of it? By the time I got to my feet and back to the Jeep, it was flames engulfed. It was engulfed. You could, it was flames. Flames. Flames over the whole Jeep? Flames, yeah. I'm going to show you now what I'm going to represent to you are some photographs of the Jeep that you saw burning that day. I'm going to label them Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, 2, and 3. And Chrysler's lawyer already has copies of these. Do those appear to be photos of the Jeep that you saw burning that day? I'd like to draw your attention specifically to plaintiff's exhibits one and two. Okay. One of those is from the driver's side and one from the passenger side. Is that right? Correct. Now, if you look at the vehicle, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and you look at how the metal is crushed, does it appear that there's more crush behind the rear axle or in front of the rear axle? I want you to answer that question based on your recollection and these photographs. Behind. 
Is there significantly, significantly less crush forward of the rear axle? Yes. I'd like to turn your attention now to Plaintiff's Exhibit 3. This is a head-on picture of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Is that right? Yes. What's in the driver's seat? I really can't tell. Does there appear to be anything in the passenger seat like what's in the driver's seat? No. Was the person who you tried to help in the driver's seat? Yes. I'm going to show you a different document now. And I'm going to mark this plaintiff's exhibit uh, number four. And I'll represent to you that this is a complaint filed in the case of Milano against Chrysler. Chrysler's lawyer already has a copy. Now, if you look at that on the, um, for, on the very first page, it, has, it says, Rona Milano is personal representative of the estate of Michael Milano on the top left. Is that right? Yes, sir. And then under that, under the verses, uh, looks at a few entities, but one of them is Daimler Chrysler Corporation. Is that right? Yes. And if you look down there in the bottom right, the, the clerk's office stamp received June 11, 2001. And I object to the use of this document to the extent it contains hearsay and the witness has no knowledge regarding the, this document whatsoever. All right. And that has not been established. Chrysler has an objection to the use of this document. For purposes of the video, let me ask the question again. Okay. And Chrysler retains its objection. It looks like uh, the clerk's office stamped this received June 11, 2001 in the bottom right. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. I'd like you to turn with me, please, uh, to page 5 of the document. And I'm going to ask you specifically about paragraph 16, 17, and 18, which describe uh, the wreck. First, the date. It says July 12, 1999. Now, you might not remember exactly, but is that about the time of the wreck that you saw? And we object to the um, questioning to the extent it asked uh, the deponent information about what is contained within this document that is hearsay. Okay. Let me ask the question. Chrysler has an objection to anything involving this complaint. Okay. About that. Let me ask you the question again uh, for the purpose of the video. Okay. I'm going to ask you about uh, paragraph 16, 17, and 18 which describe the, uh, the factual circumstances of the wreck this complaint deals with. Uh, in paragraph 16, it says, July 12, 1999. Now, you may not remember exactly, but is that about the time of the wreck that you saw? Yes. And then it says in that same paragraph, a 1996 Grand Cherokee Jeep. Does that sound like the type of vehicle that you saw? Yes, I wouldn't know the exact year, but yes, it was definitely a Jeep. Uh, it says in paragraph uh, 17 here that uh, someone, quote, rear-ended the motor vehicle being operated by the decedent, end quote. Did I read that right? Yes. Decedent, that means the person who died, is that right? Yes. So is that accurate from your recollection that someone rear-ended the motor vehicle being operated by the decedent? Yes. I'll ask you about paragraph 18. It says that, quote, that, that the, quote, motor vehicle exploded upon impact, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Is that accurate? I don't know how to say explosion. I mean, it started to fill with smoke. Did the whole thing catch fire? The whole thing did catch fire. And I'll ask you about the last part. It says that the decedent did, quote, burn to death, end quote. Did I read that right? Yes, sir. Is that accurate? Yes. I want you to look at the top of this page. Does it say have the stamp Walden against Chrysler Group LLC at the top? Yes, it does. At the bottom right, does it say have the Bates stamp CG LLC and then a number? Yes, does that suggest to you this document has been in Chrysler's possession? 
Yes. I want to show you now a different document. And I'm going to mark Plants Exhibit Number Five. This says at the top, customer assistance inquiry record. Is that right? Yes. Chrysler's yeah. lawyer already has a copy of this. We have the same objections. Do you want to give me the same standing objection with respect to this document? Yes, I do. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, this says near the top right here, Jeep Grand Cherokee Sport Utility four door. Is that right? Yes. And the uh, last sentence on the document is, summons claims vehicle was involved in accident on 7-12-1999 and exploded. Did I read that correctly? Oh, seven. Yes. Does this say Walden against Chrysler Group LLC at the top? Yes. Does it say CG LLC followed by a number at the bottom right? Yes, it does. Does it appear to have come from Chrysler? Yes. I'll show you another document that I'll mark. Plans exhibit number six. Does that appear to be a police report from the Cooper City Police Department? Yes. If you look on the second page, uh, the top says investigative report. Is that right? Yes, sir. And it says the crash occurred on Monday, July 12, 1999. Is that right? Yes. Is that about the date of the wreck that you witnessed? Yes. All right. I will ask you to turn to the page that's numbered in the bottom right, CG LLC 001410. We have the same objections, Jeb. I don't know if you want to give a standing objection to this document or not. What is Chrysler's objection to the use of this document? That it contains hearsay throughout the document. It's all for the purposes of notice, not proof of the matter asserted. It contains hearsay throughout the document. And, uh, I, I'm not certain what you're going to do, but if it's cumulative of his testimony, if it's not meant to refresh his recollection instead, he is attempting to testify to the contents of the document. I don't believe it's appropriate to simply read in a document and have a witness. None of that addresses validated. None of that addresses notice to Chrysler. Nonetheless, uh, Chrysler has a standing objection to the use of this report. That's now Plaintiff's Exhibit Six. All right. Um, let's see. We're on the page that says in the bottom right, CG LLC 001410. Is that right? Yes. It's stamped at the top, walled against Chrysler. Is that right? Yes. The document appears to have come from Chrysler's files. Is that right? Yes. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to the second to uh, last paragraph on this page. Uh, that paragraph has your name in it, right? Yes. Would you read that paragraph uh, <coughs> for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please? I spoke to witness Frank Kujawa. He was in right lane about six car lengths behind vehicle two. He said he saw vehicle two stopped at the red light at the intersection of Hiatus Road and Sterling. He observed vehicle one approach from the west bound Sterling Road and at least a, a second tried to swerve to avoid striking vehicle two. Frank Kajawa advised he approached vehicle two and tried to help get the driver out of the vehicle that was engulfed in flames. He said the vehicle was hot and he was pushed back by the heat when he tried to get close to the door. Is that an accurate description of uh, basically what you told the police on the scene? Yes. Now, after receiving this document, did anyone from Chrysler ever call you? No. Did anyone from Chrysler ever seek your deposition in connection with the case of the, uh, the Milano case, the decedent that you saw? No. Did anyone from Chrysler ever come out to meet you? No. Did they send an investigator? No. Did they send a letter? No. Did Chrysler in any way try to find out what you had seen and what you knew uh, from that day? No. 
if they had, that is, if Chrysler had called you or come to see you or taken your deposition, would you have told them the same things that you've told me here today? Of course. Calls for speculation. Go ahead and answer again. Yes, I would. show you now what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 7. Um, now, you've not seen that picture before in this case, but does that look like the back of a Jeep Grand Cherokee? Yes. Yeah, object to the form of question. Before seeing that wreck and becoming involved in this case, because we asked for your deposition, did you know that the thing circled in red was a gas tank? No, I did not. Mr. Kajawa, are you being paid to be here today? No, I, I took off work, and I'm not being paid by them either. Why did you come here today? Because I was asked to come here. If, you know, if I couldn't save someone that day, if I could save someone today by helping, I sure will. You know, it's something that, you know, a lot of this accident is still with me, and I can't shake it. You know, I, I was a career paramedic, but it's different. It's different because you, you never witness it as a paramedic. It's always after the effect, and it's nothing like that. And to not be able to help, if I can help so it don't happen to someone else, that's why I'm here on my dime. No further questions. All right. Give me two minutes, if you would. Well, not the video. Mr. Kajawa, my name is Terry Brantley. We met just a moment ago. I do have a few follow-up questions yes, for sir. you. I'll try not to cover any ground that you've previously covered today. Okay, okay I understand. All right. Um, I want to first talk a little bit about the vehicles involved in the accident. Okay. Uh, do you recall uh, what um, type of vehicle struck the rear of the Jeep Grand Cherokee? No, it was a, a um, compact car of some type, small-scale car. Okay, you recall it being a small car? Yeah, Toyota, Datsun, something uh, to that effect, yeah, I believe it to be. Okay, do you recall what color it was? No, I don't. If the accident report indicated it was a black Isuzu Rodeo sport utility, would that no, be different? I don't remember, remember the vehicle, you know, and I feel bad because in the accident, my focus was on the one vehicle. I never even thought about the second driver. And, of course, by the time I did and I seen I couldn't do anything here, people were already over attending that vehicle. Okay. And it's my understanding from your prior testimony that you didn't see the vehicle that struck the Grand Cherokee until the impact actually occurred. Is that right? I was approaching it like out of, out of a peripheral, you see something, and then I heard that, that one-tenth of a second, just enough to hear it. Instantaneous, like there wasn't much on the brake. We're on the brakes, but not for very long. They didn't realize they needed to stop. So it was a split time. second of braking before the impact. Yeah. If it was in fact braking, do you know if it was that vehicle that was braking? I heard. To I heard. Uh, no, I can only assume because I heard uh, before okay. the crash. Okay, but that's just an assumption on your part. It could have been a, another vehicle braking at that light. Mm -hmm. True. True. Okay. And once. You heard the impact. I take it your full attention went to the direction of where you heard the impact. Is that fair? Yes. So. Okay. Um, and were you able to tell if the vehicle that struck the rear of the Grand Cherokee was turning at the time it struck the rear of the Grand Cherokee or whether it hit it you know, head on, for lack of a better term? I don't know. It was in the going straight lane. It wasn't in the turn lane. But you're not aware of whether that vehicle, no. the driver of the vehicle, was able to turn the wheel before it hit the Grand Cherokee? No, I'm not. I don't. And I believe you indicated you weren't aware of what year that Grand Cherokee was? Correct. Okay. Um, and are you aware of what model that Grand Cherokee was in terms of, you know, no, throughout sir. the years they change? No, like sir. Mustangs are, are a good example. You know, the different Mustangs throughout the year. Are you aware of, you know, what version of the Grand Cherokee this one was? No, sir. Okay. 
Um, I take it that since you didn't see the vehicle that struck the rear of the Grand Cherokee, or really turn your attention to it until the actual impact, that you don't know how fast that vehicle was traveling? I don't know how fast exactly it was traveling, no, sir. Do you know whether the Grand Cherokee was stopped at the time it was struck? Yes. It was stopped? Yes. You were handed an exhibit, uh, which is the Cooper City Police Department report. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom right-hand corner, there are some numbers. And there's one, numbers 1414. And in the middle of the page, it says speed of vehicle one, which is the vehicle that hit mm -hmm. the rear of the Grand Cherokee. It I says, object, I object to this on grounds of hearsay. This is offered proof of truth of the matter asserted and is therefore distinguishable from prior use of the document. Okay. And it indicates that the speed was between 63 and 67 miles per hour. Do you see that, sir? I see that. Do you have any reason to disagree with that assessment? I don't know how fast it was going. Okay. You don't have any re reason to disagree with that, do you? Or agree or disagree. I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't tell you how fast they were going. I don't know. Okay. Now, um, when you look at the third page from the end of this document. Third page from the end? Yes, sir. The title here says complaint affidavit. Yes, sir. Have you ever seen that before? No, sir. Okay. Were you provided with this document prior to your deposition today? Cooper City Police Department. I did see the Cooper City Police light thing, yes. Okay. Mr. Butler provided you with that document? Yes. And this was part of that document that he provided you? This, he gave you this entire package, right? Yes. Okay. And the complaint affidavit indicates that... Um, a certain um, individual, Miss Janet Fontana, okay, was being charged with manslaughter and vehicle homicide as a result of this. I accident. didn't know that. Same objection. Okay. Were you ever asked to testify with respect to a criminal no. prosecution? No, sir. Have you ever provided any testimony as it relates to this case before today, or this accident before today? Maybe two days after for, to the police department, C Cooper City sent out a, a detective or crime investigation, somebody to my home to ask me some questions, a detective or someone from Cooper City Police Department. It's the only one I talked to like a day or two after the, the accident. Did you, were you able to determine how far the Isuzu rodeo traveled after it struck the rear of the Grand Cherokee? How far? It ended up on the on the other side of the intersection. I couldn't give you feet or distance or anything. And I take it it knocked the Grand Cherokee some distance forward and spun it around? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you able to tell me how far it knocked the Grand Cherokee forward? In feet, really, no. It was ju just enough to send it, like I said, just enough to send it on a, on a swooping turn like that and, in, and finish like that. Were you able to determine the exact location where the fire began with Grand Cherokee? I definitely seen the smoke in the back compartment where the, I would call it a luggage compartment because it's behind the, the um, passenger door. And at that time, were you able to determine the exact location where the fire was? Or were you more focused on the smoke? The smoke. Okay. I was racing to get them out before the smoke get there.
you were also handed a document, uh, plaintiff's exhibit number four. Uh, you recall seeing that document? No. The only thing I've seen was a Cooper City Police report, my statement to Cooper City Police. And if you turn to page 1520, in this one? Yes, sir. Part of this document contains wrongful death claims against Ms. Fontana. Okay, at the bottom. Is okay. that right? It says wrongful death claim against defendant Janet Fontana. Is that what you're asking? Yes. That's what it says, yes, sir. And do you understand that was the driver of the vehicle that struck the rear of I do now. Okay. I didn't at the time. I didn't know the okay. names of either or. Okay. Those are all the questions I have, sir. Thank you. Let's go off video for a second. Cross record. Back on the record. Mr. Kajawa, Chrysler's lawyer asked you some questions about the supposed severity of this wreck. Do you remember those questions? Yes. Now, I'd like you to look at Plans Exhibits 1 and 2. Those are the photographs of the Jeep Grand Cherokee that you saw get hit. Is that right? Yes. Do those photographs give us a pretty good indication of how severe this wreck was? Object to the fourth question. Yes. Now, I wanted to ask you this. Was the person that you tried so hard to save killed by the initial impact or by the fire? It has to be by the fire. I made eye contact with him. Object to the form of question. He looked. Did you ever hear him say anything or uh, yes. that after the hit that would suggest to you that he was alive until he was killed by the fire? I heard it was a scream and then it faded. I was like, ah. I want to ask you some questions uh, about something else, too. You were a, a paramedic, I think we've established. Yes, sir. Uh, now, when you were a paramedic, did you work road wrecks? Yes, sir. Have you ever, in your duties as a paramedic, reached the conclusion that someone was killed or injured by, quote, diffuse axonal injury? End quote. form of the question. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Well... You probably had contact with uh, doctors who treated patients and that kind of thing as a paramedic. Is that right? Yes. Did you ever hear of any of them diagnosing someone with a, quote, diffuse axonal injury? End Object quote? to the form of the question. Object is irrelevant. No. Uh, did you ever hear any of those doctors even mention, quote, diffuse axonal injury? End quote. Objection is irrelevant. No. Did you ever hear any other paramedics that you work with talk about, quote, diffuse axonal injury, end quote? It's not an objection. That's irrelevant. No. Uh, how about in your training as a paramedic? Did anyone ever uh, talk then or write anything about diffuse axonal injury? Objection. It's no. irrelevant. Answer no. one more time? No. Uh, how about, uh, well, before this case, before... You recall, give a deposition, in this case, Walden against Chrysler. Had you ever heard of, quote, diffuse axonal injury? Object quote. to the form of the question asked and answered. Irrelevant. No, I never heard it. Now, Chrysler saw you ask you some questions about um, the, uh, about the complaint. And that's in front of you. And it's actually marked, I think, Exhibit 4. So we'll get to that in a second. But right now, um, do you remember Chrysler's lawyer asking you questions about some of the allegations in this complaint? Yes. Turn with me, if you will, to page 9. 1519? Uh, no, it's actually 9 in the big print. That's the Chrysler uh -huh. bait stamp, but 9 in the big print. The bottom of the page. All right. And if you look there at paragraph 29... A, tell me if I've read this allegation from the complaint correctly. Quote, Defendant Chrysler was negligent in one or more of the following acts or omissions. By negligently, negligently manufacturing the fuel system, such that the fuel system would explode upon impact or collision. Hang on a second. 
and I have the same objection to this document that I had before. I don't know if you want to provide me with a standing objection if you have a number of questions relating to it or if you'd like for me to continue to object as we go along. You have a stick. I'm not going to do it Did I read that correctly, Mr. I, Kajal? I object to the form of question. Yes, yes. Uh, calls for hearsay. Um, go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Brantley, this door has been opened very wide. Uh, I will go through it. Uh, nonetheless, so that the flow of this is easy, our videographer has an easier time, I will again give you a standing objection to the use of the complaint, which constitutes plaintiff's exhibit number four. Um, and I will start these questions again to save our videographer some time on it. Um, I'd like to direct your attention, Mr. Kajala, uh, to page nine of the complaint, paragraph 29 and 29A. Uh, would you please read those allegations in 29 and then 29A for the jury? Defendant Chrysler was negligent in one or more of the following acts or omissions. A. By negligently manufacturing the fuel system such that the fuel system would explode upon impact or collision. Thank you. And the last, I think the last thing I want to ask you about is the Cooper City Police Report, and that's the paper uh, just under the one that you've got, and it's the one that we marked as Plans Exhibit 6. Chrysler's lawyer asked you some questions about this. Do you remember that? Yes. Specifically, he asked you some questions about this page that has Chrysler's bait stamp on the bottom right. It says CGLLC 001416. Do you remember that? 17? I'm on the wrong page. Well, that's all right. I don't remember what she asked you about. Look at 1416 and 1417. All right. Okay. Um, now, Chrysler's lawyer asked you about having reviewed this document with me, right? Yes. Did you did you and I go over the entire document? No. Did we go over uh, 1416 or 1417? No. Now, if Chrysler's lawyer had come out there to meet with you, just like I came out there to meet with you, would you have met with Chrysler's lawyer too? Yes, sir. If Chrysler had sent an investigator to ask about this wreck and, and what went wrong with the Jeep, would you have met with that person yes, just like you met with me? Object to the form of the question. Yes, sir. No further questions. Give me one minute, please. Off video. Off record. We're on the record. I just want to be clear on one issue, Mr. Kajawa. Yes, sir. And it is when you saw the impact and the aftermath of the accident itself, you saw a fire. You did not see an explosion, did you? I saw smoke and fire. You did not see an explosion, did you? I don't know the true definition of an explosion. I saw smoke and fire. Okay. So that's how you would describe what you saw, smoke and fire. Correct. <coughs> smoke, fire. Okay. Those are all the questions I have. Let me follow up briefly. Mr. Kajala, based on what you observed, did it matter to the person driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee whether Chrysler's lawyer would later characterize this as a fire or an explosion? Object to the form of the question. Would it matter, you said? Yeah. No. Would it matter at all? Object to the form of the question. Nothing further. All for speculation. But I don't have any further questions. This concludes the deposition of Francis Kujawa. We're going off the video record at 4.30 in the evening.